Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the DVC Show. I am your host, Paul Krieger, and I am joined, as always, by my lovely wife, Amy Krieger. Hello. We've got John Sicari, a.k.a. Big Fat Panda, with us. Welcome home. Derek DeBoer, Senior Sales Associate for the DVC Resale Market. Hey, now. And Jeff Haslam joining us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nailed it that time, Jeff. It took three shows and he finally did it the right way. <laughs> it, it is perfect. Uh, before any going any further, uh, the question on every viewer's mind, probably not the audio listeners because they don't care, but what is Derek DeBoer's shirt today? And oh. so um, <laughs> we are going to have him answer that question. If you've watched us for the past two weeks, we're the rest of us are wearing the same exact thing. Uh, or if you've been listening and just want to know what we're wearing, I'm wearing a nice light gray kind of zip up. It's got the Alani logo. This is getting weird. Um, <laughs> Amy has a Disney Spirit jersey on. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Haslam may or may not be wearing a shirt. Um <laughs> I'm wearing Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Panda has a shirt that he uh, proclaimed earlier that he spent way too much money on, but it is cute. It is cute. It is cute. It's got some it Mickey's cute. on it. But yeah, no, um, yeah, my mine mine tonight, which uh, Jeff or Panda, I can't remember which one made a comment when I said I'm bringing shirts in for e each show. They're like, you have more costume changes than like a share concert. And I kind of took that as a compliment, I guess, because every shirt that I wear means something. This, for anybody out there, I began my Disney Vacation Club career as a Disney Vacation Club guide outside Chicago at Woodfield Mall at the first ever Disney Vacation Club preview center where you could learn about DVC, tour the model rooms at a place called Disney's Doorway to Dream. So that was back in 2007, 2008. We were there for about five years. So if you've ever been there, if you're one of those people, those folks were the best members ever they have become great friends of mine over the years so put in the comments if you've been to disney's doorway to dreams and we miss you it was such a great great place and i still got the shirt it definitely does not fit like it did in 2007 that i will definitely tell you midriff <laughs> oh, yeah. no it's got the full thing on it i just got it's just a little a little tighter around the midsection so yeah. I After, honestly wish I could have seen that back in the day. I, I can't imagine mm -hmm. going to the mall and walking out with a timeshare. That just right. so foreign, but I think it's cool. It the was the greatest. The it truly was. Again. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, you could do a whole show on this because the folks that came there to learn about it, it was such a great concept because you had so many folks that would see it and they'd see the model rooms and they all came in and learned about it the same way you would in Florida. But they got to say, hey, you know what? I don't I didn't want to take a couple hours during my Disney vacation. But if I'm here in the mall, you know, why not learn about it? Right. And then be able to tour the model rooms, feel like you were in Florida. We sold millions and millions and millions of dollars of timeshare to just some of the best members ever. So it was such a great. Well, um, there you go. That's uh Derek's outfit of the week. A little history lesson. A little, too. And a little history lesson along with it. So, Derek, thank you so much. Um, if you are watching or listening to this show, uh, this and all of our DVC fan content is brought to you by the world of DVC. DVC resale market. If you're looking to buy or sell a Disney Vacation Club contract, Monera Financial. If you're looking to finance that Disney Vacation Club resale contract purchase, and the DVC Rental Store, where you can try before you buy, rent out some points, or rent your own points. So please show some love to those sponsors. There's links in the description of this video and on our podcast as well. So, speaking of buying or selling. Why are we laughing? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it while he was giving his spiel. It was just funny to me. Just, just watch the playback, Paul. You'll see. Watch the playback. Oh, wow. Something yeah. dropped from Panda's ceiling, like onto his face. It's like he's got like a pigeon flying around his head. <laughs> what? It was no. my bird. My world of DVC bird wasn't very kind to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I missed all of that. I was just like the staring. Wheels come off. I was just, I, I've said, I've said some of those words so many times that it's just like you go into this mental zone where you, you're not even like, you're not even cognizant as you're, as you're saying what you're saying. I'm sad I missed it. We'll have to play it back. We will play it back and we will add it in slow motion to this video over top of us talking about it too, just so that we could see it that many times. But uh, 
Speaking of buying or selling a Disney Vacation Club contract, uh, today's show is all about selling a Disney Vacation Club contract, which I think a lot of people view as a negative. You know, it's not something you ever want to think about or, or get in the position to think about, but it is for one reason or another, uh, something that you do consider at some time in your Disney Vacation Club journey for one reason. I already said that. Um, <laughs> for one reason. Or, that's the word of the week. One reason or another. Uh, hearken. <laughs> Love her. Love her. It harkens back. <laughs> but wow. uh it is something that as of most recently I know that uh three of us on this call are actually actively considering. And um you know, Amy and I have been talking about uh a couple of our contracts for a while and kind of maneuvering points and how we want to do that. And I, in, in kind of pre-gaming for this show, Jeff kind of mentioned that it's something he's considering as well. So um, we'll kind of share those stories as to why we're, why we're making those decisions right now, but also get into what, what the selling process is like um, with Mr. Door, door to Doorman to Dreams or whatever, Doorway. <laughs> door. Door. <laughs> <laughs> like he's a bellhop or something. <laughs> He, looks, he just needs a he needs a tie and a coat. He would be a bellhop tonight. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll get his point of view on the sales process and and what what selling looks like as well, and maybe some alternatives to selling. But this is something that you and I have been talking about for some time um, uh, about our contracts, and I know it's like it's bittersweet. Yeah. To talk about. So yeah. So for us, it is you know it's not really a bad thing. It's yeah. looking at what's upcoming and what we might be interested in the future. Uh, particularly, we were interested in the cabins. Um, we do talk a lot about about that in the uh, the show that came out two weeks ago about the trust stuff that that we're a little bit off of that since uh, the the pet limit is two and we have three dogs, but. Still thinking about the future, you know, obviously I don't think that DVC is stopping at the Polynesian Tower and the cabins. We might see other things in the future or, you know, Cor Coronado, Coronado Springs, Springs baby. Springs, uh, Yacht Club, you know, I, I would definitely consider selling, um, you know, in order to quote unquote upgrade. Uh, you know, we have um, some contracts that we obviously would never get rid of. For example, our our direct animal kingdom is the contract we were grandfathered into direct perks with. So it's, our baby. it's 50 points and so we're never getting rid of that until it expires. Um, and then when it does, I'll have to, you know, pry it out of my cold dead hands. Uh, we've got 160 points at animal kingdom. We always say that when it comes to these contracts <laughs> and stuff, it's like, it's, it's very possible. We, we might be dead. <laughs> Don't say that. Um, we've got an animal kingdom, 160 points. We've thought about that before selling it. Um, the thing is, is that we got that resale for $97 a point and we got it before they changed the rules. So it is good to use at every resort. Um, so I don't want to give up those, those cheap points that we can yeah. use at every resort. So it would not be, um, I don't think it'd be wise for us to, to sell that one off. Um, we have a Grand Floridian contract. We love the Grand Floridian. It has a really great expiration date right now, 2064. The annual dues are very low. Um, I don't see us getting rid of that. We have a Polynesian contract. Um, we just got it um, with the news of the Polynesian Tower being in the same, you know, association, uh, which is their plan that, you know, that definitely makes us want to keep a hold of that. We also just got it. We love it. There's a lot of good value there for that contract. Longer expiration date than Grand Floridian. Mm -hmm. Not too bad on annual <clears throat> dues as well. Um, Grand Cow, uh, we just got that a couple years ago. Obviously, we have that for a specific reason, so we don't want to get rid of those. Very valuable contracts when you <laughs> When you outline all these contracts yeah. we own, it, it does sound terrible. like a lot. It's it not sounds, that many. Sounds like um, we collected them all. Like, but I feel like you guys do. are bragging. <laughs> <laughs> Just like why we don't want to get rid of each different ones. But there is one that we've considered getting rid of, not we've considered selling. And that is our boardwalk contract, which is very shocking because boardwalk, if you asked us you know, like a year ago or so, I think Paul and I both would say that Boardwalk is, was our favorite resort. Yeah. I, I still love Boardwalk. I still love the location. I still love the theming of the general resort, the exterior, the beautiful villa side, the lobby. Um, I love the Boardwalk itself, you know, the music, the fact that I can walk to two parks. There's a lot to love at Boardwalk. But here comes the boy. <laughs> with that but said. the new pillowcase is just throwing me over the edge <laughs> <laughs> not far uh, off not far off close 
Um, no, there, there are several reasons, though. First, we, we're not in love with the refurbishment. Now, we know that ref- refurbishment is a period of time that the look will change in you know, seven years. There'll be another soft goods. Um, but in seven years, there won't be that much left on that contract. Uh, so that's the other thing, right? We've got a 2042 resort that is now that we've hit 20, uh, 24. We now have what 18 years. Good. So is that right? Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. I, I math. Listen, I have an English degree. I do <laughs> write loans though. So, you know, I'm getting there. Um, so, you know, 2042 resort, we've got something that's expiring, you know, sooner rather than later, we've got relatively highish dues. Um, and just the fact that we're not in love with the rooms anymore and, and we are local now and we actually have stayed at boardwalk with other points, not pretty easily. Um, you know, we don't book as, um, as early as 11 months anymore. And we find that the boardwalk does have a decent inventory of, you know, in the pool garden view area and, and that we're pretty good at finding things. Um, you know, and we're flexible too. Um, so that's not really one that I feel like we, we really need to own anymore, even though we've loved it for so long. And then we've got a picture of it on our wall. I don't have to take it down, right? We, saw we don't have to take the picture down. <laughs> we've got Christmas ornaments. We've got, no. I know it's always, it will always be a part of my heart, but it is a consideration. And those are the reasons why. Yeah. Yeah. That and, makes perfect uh, sense what, <clears throat> for somebody like you guys. That makes total sense to me. Yeah, yeah it, it's just kind of, it's diversifying towards the future. And, uh, you know, originally, you know, a, a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, if we had filmed this show earlier, it was, we're flipping it for, for cabin points because mm-hmm. we want to be able to take our dogs. Like that was just a, you know, Jeff's, He's Jeff's got dogs. his dog he, and he was in the, he, driving me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> But Jeff, you, Jeff, you, you kind of, um, you know, you're, you're making a similar decision right now and you were considering cabin points. So, you know, that, that, I don't know if that was weighing into your decision, but tell us a little bit about, you know, where you're at. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the biggest thing for us is, you know, we moved down here to Florida from Utah about six months ago. We're halfway through our year lease. We decided to rent down here while we decided kind of where we ultimately wanted to be. <clears throat> and I wouldn't sell my contract just for that to, to help out with the down payment of the new house, but I'm a little heavy on old key West points. My direct contract is through, you know, through Disney at old key West. They expire in 2057. Obviously my other contract is also old key West, but it's a 2042 contract. And I just keep thinking, well, I could sell this now, use that money for down payment and then get something that I really want, you know, to Amy's point, Poly, whatever's down the road, future wise with, you know, something with expiration that's a little further down the road. We've got great use out of these points. I'm money ahead from when I bought. And those are just kind of the things that I've been kicking around because I just, I would like the opportunity to book somewhere else early on. Yep. Yep. Old Old Key West is great, but it's, and I, and I think for a lot of us, you know, I've, I've written about this in a couple of different blogs, um, for both resale market and, and for DVC fan, but it's, we, we, we talk about 2042 now. And now that we're under 20 years, I don't know, like there's this itch, there's this urgency where it's just like, yeah, Ooh, I don't know. It doesn't sound <laughs> as comfortable as it once did. It's, 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 it feels a lot closer now it does. than it did. Um, it is well, still and great. And, and there's still a lot of amazing 2042 resorts. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, well, I just, and I bought way, I didn't, I had never even stayed at Disney Vacation Club when I purchased my contracts. I bought during COVID. We were pop century people. And so I didn't really know what I didn't know. And now that I've been in this world for a few years and have a better understanding of where I like to stay, and I just would like a little more variety in my, in my options. So, well, I think you guys hit it on the head perfectly already, just from you guys talking, is that people sell for so many different reasons. We can tell you, like you said, Paul, no one buys a contract and says, you know, I can't wait to sell this thing. It's gonna be so fantastic, I can't wait to sell it. But things happen, life happens. So whether it's a divorce, whether it's a spouse, whether it's just, hey, 
Derek, we have loved this membership so much. The memories have been fantastic, but you know what? Our vacation plans have changed. We're taking different types of trips now, but we love it. We need to go ahead and sell it. Or like you guys say, hey, you know what? This has been great. Uh, I still want to be a Disney Vacation Club member, but maybe I have too many points or maybe I want to get a different resort. That's why we were you know, able to sell close to $100 million last year. So nobody, again, buys it saying I can't wait to sell it, but the end of the day, thank God that there's places like us, the DVC resale market, that we can help you go through the process in a seamless, easy way. That is not a shameless plug that is seriously trying to yeah. just tell you we're here to help you with no matter how many questions you have. That's the that's the absolute key that I just want to stress to people that if you just have questions, it's not like you reach out to us and you have to immediately sign an agreement and you have to list with us within a certain amount of time. Just reach out to us on, on live chat. We are literally in 2024, we are open from 9 a.m. Eastern time to midnight Eastern time. So you can call us on the phone, you can go onto our website in the lower right-hand portion, there's a chat button. You can chat with one of the fantastic uh, uh, vacation agents here that can just answer your questions. And it, if you're ready, fantastic. We'll walk you through the process and it's super easy. So Derek, let's let's role play that for for a minute. I've 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 called the line. It's 11:59 p.m. Eastern time, and uh, <laughs> I I got you on the phone, and either I myself, <laughs> I, I, myself, Amy, or Jeff, we've told you kind of our story. Um, if we are someone that is looking to sell, what does this process look like? Because that I think is the next question that a lot of people have um, in the yeah. in the sales in the world. Yeah, first of all, I wanna stress how easy it is. Uh, we work with Disney the whole entire process. Uh, being the number one resale company in, in the world, we have, you know, I think at Paul, it's like what, like 65% of the total worldwide market for Disney Vacation Club resales. Did over 4,400 contracts last year. Uh, I always wanna put those folks, you know, we wanna put their mind at ease, right? To say, listen, we're gonna work with Disney this whole process. <laughs> Look at how many contracts we've done. We have got this thing down to a science. So it's, you know, 80% of listings will sell within seven days. I think it's over 90% will sell within 30 days or less. Uh, we even have a link on our site too, that you could see that by listing and selling with us, your listing on average is gonna sell for anywhere between, you know, 5% and maybe up to 20% more than any of the other smaller companies there. So that's where we first and foremost say, hey, if you're gonna list with us, if you're gonna sell, sell with us. So what we do is just get your basic information. If you decide, Paul, and say, hey, guys, I think we want to yeah. go ahead and sell this contract, we basically just email you a form. One of the agents will just get your email, send you off a form. You'll see that there's just an online link that you just click this link. You're just going to fill in your basic membership info, your contract number, uh, your home address, the name of the owners, all that. The form comes back to us. Then you are emailed the form to just sign electronically. That's just your listing form. I want to stress, you do not have to list with us for a certain amount of days. You do not have to say, well, if I list with you, do I have to sign like a 30-day agreement or a 60-day agreement? You might list with us and in two weeks say, you know what, we had a change of heart. We want to remove the listing. Completely fine whatsoever. There's no upfront fees at all. Once you've signed the form, which basically has your membership details, we will ask you just to provide a couple of pictures from the member website, which we detail exactly the pictures we need, which in short is just a picture of your main dashboard. I'll right. So when you, you log into your member I'll send website. You all kinds of pictures. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to email them back. That's not the picture I need, Paul. <laughs> it's just two pictures, really. It's just your main dashboard because we want to see uh, if you have any points in a holding account. So that's the one picture. The second picture we need is just your detailed point activity statement, which is the one that you can get right from the dashboard, which is the one that has the dates, right? So on the left-hand side, it has all the dates of your most recent transaction, uh, shows how many points were used for X amount of use here, because that's probably the most important part is we need to verify and make sure that every point you're listing, we state, you know, were any points banked? Were any points borrowed? Because it's critical that we list every single point. Because if even one point is off, when it's sold, which it will sell, if it goes to Disney and Disney looks at it and says, ah, oh, that's not what we have. We don't show that you have this many bank points. You guys got to start back over at scratch. So always stress, that's the most important part. Uh, we then create your listing. And again, depending on how quickly you can do this process, I had a uh, someone yesterday that literally filled out a form. They sent it to me, got me the pictures. They were up on the website process from beginning to end within one hour. And they were live on the site with their listing. Uh, 
we will create your listing for you. We will send it to you for your approval beforehand. We will always suggest a price. <laughs> so people might come in and say, I want to list my, uh, you know, Boulder Ridge points at $200 a point. Uh, we're not going to do that because we want to look at the current market. That's most importantly, because we have so much volume and so much inventory. We will suggest to you, hey, based on the resort you have, based on the points provided, based on is it stripped, is it banked points, uh, is it fully loaded? We're going to suggest that price to you. Then once it's done and you approve that listing, it takes us probably less than an hour to get it up live on the website. We send you a link and say, congratulations, you are live on the site and one of our fantastic agents will be in touch with you with offers on your listing. So when it's live on the site, any agent, we get offers literally 24 hours a day. So we'll reach out to you with offers and say, hey, Paul, we have a fantastic offer for your XXX listing. Uh, the offer is this, you can either A, choose to accept it, or you could just say, hey, you know what? I'm not comfortable with that. I think maybe could we meet in the middle or maybe counter a couple of dollars less. There, there could be back and forth, which is great. Uh, once it's done and that deal, we will have a contract to you to sign all done electronically. Probably within 24 hours, you'll have that contract sent to you via DocuSign for you to sign. Then we let you know every step of the process. Our concierge team will email you and say, hey, great news. We've got everything ready. We've just sent it off to Disney for Rofer, and we'll let you know the day we get the verdict. Then we'll let you know, congrats, you've made it through Rofer. You've also made it through the estoppel process. We're gonna send you the closing documents within a couple weeks. Then boom, closing documents and everything's done. Total process, about 60 to 80 days, usually from start to finish. And, uh, and then you're all set. And as long as there's no loan that you have, uh, meaning the only two fees that we have, again, as a seller with us, there's no upfront fees at all. You're just gonna pay the commission, right? 9.25% right now and you're gonna pay $150 to Disney. All that's taken out of the proceeds from the sale. Anything left over, sent to you via check after closing, usually about seven to 10 days. And that's it. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. And it was easy. I've sold a contract with Derek and it was super simple. Now, Jeff, speaking to that, I, it, correct me if I'm wrong, when you sold your contract, we hear about right of first refusal. We hear about Rofer when it comes up in the buying process. That's that process in which after you've agreed to terms to buy a Disney Vacation Club contract, Disney does have the right to essentially buy it for that same price. And if they elect to do so, you as the buyer have to essentially go find something else to buy, uh, which is fine. There's other, there's other fish in the sea. There's other options out there. Um, but from a selling perspective, is that any different? Does that... Does it, did that feel any different? Does that speed up the process, Derek? Or, you know, what does that look like? <clears throat> Not really. I mean, for and, and Jeff can touch on it personally, but basically when Disney buys that contract back, they're basically just taking over as the closing agent, right? So they're just going to handle the process just like they would anybody else. They've done it obviously thousands of times, uh, but I don't think there's really any, you know, sort of a delay. What, there's zero there's zero concern for, for a seller. So sellers sometimes maybe are not sure, you know, when it comes to the rofer process. Hey guys, I'm thinking about selling my contract, but I'm worried if I list it for you know 150 and it sells for $150 a point, does that mean that Disney can come in for like a hundred bucks a point and then just buy it back for me? No. If Disney buys it back, as Jeff knows, it has to be at the exact same terms that it was sold for. So as a seller, it's a win-win. You don't care who gets the contract, either the buyer's getting it. Or Mickey Mouse is getting it. Yeah. And Jeff, it was a smooth process all the way through. Yeah. In fact, I was selling my contract while I was at Alani, as I recall. And Derek called me and said, hey, you your, your, uh, your thing got eaten up by Rofer. So your, your buyers are pissed, but you're good to go. And it, it was it was done very quickly after that. So, mm -hmm. And you actually you actually were calling Derek at 1159 p.m. probably if you were out in Alani. <laughs> it so. was pretty close. Uh <laughs> Yeah, the only thing I will say to people that maybe they don't realize is there are those out there that try to get these things at a significant discount. And so the, the first few offers that I got were oh, yeah. way low, like ridiculously low. And and World of DVC is awesome about saying, hey, we, I got to bring you this offer because it came in, but I wouldn't take it, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing unless they don't say it that way, but that's kind of the impression you got. And, and if you're smart, you know, if they're offering 20 points below what it's listed at, that it's, yeah. 
it's yeah. a no-go. And as Derek mentioned, you know, there's that calculator on the DVC resale market website that really, it, if, if you have no idea what your contract is worth um, and mm-hmm. you're considering selling, it's at least going to give you that blueprint of, you know, this is kind of that range. Um, and this is, this is kind of... <laughs> and there are people too that I talk to every single day that literally will go on, use that tool, have zero intention of selling, but they use the tool, they see it because depending on what they bought and when they bought it, they leave and go, oh my God this is the best thing I ever bought in my whole entire life. <laughs> I'm not selling it. It's well, just a fun tool to use. I mean, Amy, you brought up that <laughs> earlier, like the difference in our value of our animal kingdom contract. Like, yeah. Like we bought in the nineties and yeah, not the 1990s. <laughs> <laughs> we bought in 2018. Oh. We met the price. Yeah. It just sounded like, like a year when you said it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. $97 old. a point. Like that's, you know, it's pretty good. And Animal Kingdom now is in the. It's like one one twenties right now. Yeah. It was up really high, like in the almost one fifties. But yeah, you know, the market's a little bit yeah. lower right now. Now, um, a man that's been very quiet this episode, um, and I just want to say, you know, it's it's for good reason. Someone that has no intent of selling <laughs> Panda. You absolutely love your contract, and uh, and and have no plans of selling. Yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. want to borrow and bank and buy more yeah panda is going to be placing low ball offers on jeff and i's contracts once we list them uh, on the resale market but it would come with our autograph panda so i mean that's worth a little bit yeah and you can literally hear the best stories from all of our sellers that's why we truly have like the best jobs in the whole entire world because honestly most of the time when people sell they sell just because their lifestyles changed. And I mean, I've had so many people over the years will reach out to me and say, Derek, you know, thank you for selling the contract, but will you do me a favor? Will you please tell the new owners that we hope that you enjoy it as much as we have? Cause we've, you know, we joined when we got married and then we had kids and we've had grandkids, you know, and we've just enjoyed it so much. So please wish them the best. It's almost like they bought their house, right? Yeah, but, I was about to say just that. Yeah. Points, but you have such an emotional attachment to it that it, it just makes it like anything else in the world. So just we, amazing. We still, we still check in every once in a while with the person that bought our house uh, back in West Virginia, because it's just like, I want to know how it's doing. I want to know, like we were just up there for the holidays and like casually yeah. did a drive by just making sure, huh? Oh yeah. Aww. Well, Oh, that board up on the roof is still missing. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's been I, missing I, for I 10 years I just got back now. from Utah for the holidays and did the same thing and drove past our old house. I'm like, they're killing my tree out front. Like my tree is dead. <laughs> <laughs> of course it's Jeff. winter. So it probably might, isn't dead. It might, might, isn't. It's probably not dead, but Hey, this, it's hour three of these shows. Cut me some slack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're fine. You're, you're, you're doing great. You're, you're still awake. It's fine. Um, no, but I, uh, I mean, it reminds me of that. Oh, Carol Channing's back. Yeah, I think he looks like it looks like an episode of Dexter's Laboratory. Have you ever seen that show? <laughs> no, what I've heard yes. of it, I've never watched You've it. Never I never, I never it? chose to really watch Point it. Dexter? No. No. Okay, it's a good show. Um, uh, speaking of Derek, what you said about like families, though, and and what we said about following up on houses when we were in um i don't know if you remember this when we got engaged in cape may and we were at that bed and breakfast um the the house the bed and breakfast house had a book that you could write your story in so essentially you could write your story of and that lived on with the house that i don't know it'd just be a cool concept where now we're going to start a website where it's it's like people like can it's like, yeah. this is my contract. And then like, and so-and-so the bought it. And, I like, stayed with it and, yeah. and then, and then someone else bought it. Like that'd be, that'd be, that'd be cool to just like, it, see. It, it would be so amazing just because again, the stories are so for, honestly, for the most part, they're just so happy. And sometimes they can be heart wrenching and they can sometimes be, you know, in the case say of someone losing their spouse and simply it's, you know, Derek, I'm selling this. We have loved it, but emotionally i'm not ready to go back because you know we have spent every single year there so i'm just not ready but i want the new owners to enjoy it just as much see i get all goosebumpy because it's true i mean it's such an emotional attachment unlike anything else so again whether you're selling because you just want to look for maybe a different resort or maybe you're selling for you know personal reasons emotional reasons just reach out to us with any questions you have and we're happy to help yeah yeah and there's people that have to sell right now for one reason or another, but you know, five years down the road, they're in a better place and they're back and they, and they decide to buy back in. And those, I've heard plenty of those stories as well, uh, you know, down all, along the way. 
Um, something I wanted to touch on. So we came up with this topic uh, about a week ago and started planning for it and everything. And then um, was talking to Derek a little bit earlier today and actually talking to others at DVC Resale Market. And uh, what's funny is that uh, normally you would think, oh, they're doing a seller show. They must they must need more contracts. Well, actually, no. At the moment, we're in the we're in the exact opposite market, um, which is kind of typical for this time of year. Normally, first of the year, you've got a lot of sellers hitting the market because of annual dues or because they just know for the upcoming year it's not going to be something that's that they they want to use anymore for one reason or another. So uh, we we definitely. Um, are are pushing into what we would we would call a buyer's market when it comes to you know uh, the Disney Vacation Club resale market where there's just a plenty of sellers on the market and if you are a seller um, potentially that changes maybe your mindset of what you want to do with that contract right now and I wanted to throw out just a, a quick alternative to selling which could potentially be to delay that and rent points, rent out your points with someone like the DVC rental store um, in the short term until maybe the market is better or in that position. And I don't have to tell Derek this, you know, these are conversations that him and I have daily when it comes to, you know, rental store and resale market. It's as Derek said, give us a call and, and, it, and it's a conversation that can be had at that time. What is the best situation for you? That's selling a Disney vacation club contract. <laughs> <laughs> my uh my aunt just rented some points um through you guys and we Ooh. went to dinner a couple weeks ago when she was here and just couldn't talk enough about how easy that process was and they're going to be relisting some more because they don't is like riviera the, <laughs> is yeah. this Brittany. the same is this yeah. the same uh is this the same aunt that put the stopwatch timer every 90 minutes for the no different that was my oh, sister oh okay no, sister my <laughs> aunt my aunt Brittany has talked to you on the phone a few times. Hi, Brittany, if you're watching. Hi, Brittany. She's Aww. not. But. Hi, Brittany. Uh, Panda, you've been you've been listening to this conversation a little bit. Any questions that have just randomly popped into your head while we've been talking about no, selling or anything? I have to be honest. The process seems really ridiculously easy. If I had to sell, I don't ever want to. I can't think of a scenario, but no, no questions at all. I see, and I've rented points from you guys back in the past, yeah. and it's been the easiest thing in the world. Uh, as a renter, you know, you don't know that you're not DVC. It feels like you are for that rental period. So yeah, it's been easy. Everything's been really easy. Amy, any last thoughts, wisdom? Disney, all three of my dogs are in this room right now and you didn't even know it. <laughs> I will pay know extra which, if you, which if you means let me. There's one right there. I, actually, I, 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 love, right there. I love how much she she's pleading there's for this, but there's like a hundred page documents filed with the I state know, of Florida that outline the terms and conditions of dogs in these cabins. It's right. What if it's you better brought for our a, budget? What if you brought an external tent and you said one of the dogs is always going to be in that tent? <laughs> Cinders, you going to sleep in the tent? That's a no. I think she'd put Paul in the tent before she put. <laughs> That's what I was the thinking. That's exactly. Wow, what is that an option? No. I'd be in. The I do tent. have a follow up question though, um, yeah. and Derek, Paul, I'm just curious, and maybe you guys don't have numbers on this, but how many renters become owners? Is that a pretty significant number? Um, <clears throat> I, I, it's not as high as I think a lot of people think it would be. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you have to look at the clientele of a lot of people that that come. And, and are renting points. Those are the people that normally are staying in value or moderate level accommodations. And not necessarily are they yearly visitors to Walt Disney World, but they've learned through the process that they can get a higher level of accommodation by renting DVC points as compared to, you know, going to that moderate or, or, right. or, or something of that sort. Big, but there family is family trips where they want yeah. to stay together or something like that. But, but there is a, definitely a percentage of people that are like, oh, my God, I love this. And, you know, we always say try before you buy, too. We, we, we see those people all the time where, where they're potentially they're piecing together a split stay through uh, renting points. And then a month later or so, they're calling Derek up and they're and they're trying to uh, – purchase the contract now that they know what they want so and so many times so many times it's those people too that always say you know what i'm not a deluxe person because you know we just say at all star we stay at pop century because you know we're never in the room man we're like in the parks like 18 hours a day so it really doesn't matter once they try it and once they stay in a deluxe resort they're never going back to all star yeah, they ain't never yeah. going back to pop century <laughs> it's just like once you uh once you use your points on a one bedroom for the first time it's like oh well <laughs> Spoiled myself now. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah. Yep. Need need one bedroom points at at that point, <laughs> but that's that's what that's what the beauty of the cabins were. They were one bedroom accommodation. Well, you take your family to the. You take your family to the Riviera and they see the one bedroom and then you're so excited for the next trip, but you only got a studio and they're like, <laughs> you're like you, they, t- you, the, they totally are spoiled. Yeah. That's when you have to reach out to the, uh, the doorman to dreams. As Paul said, <laughs> I think that was my name. <laughs> doorman. What was it? David? Was it? <laughs> I don't know what you said. Donald. Donald. That was it. That was Donald. Oh, Donald. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, Derek, any parting thoughts on selling a DVC contract before we sign off? Nope. Can't stress enough. Just reach out to us with questions. Again, you don't have to reach out to us. to If you think you might be 5% there, reach out to us with questions. Just reach out to us yeah. on chat. Reach us out to over the phone. Shoot us an email. We're here to help, and we will decide what path is going to be best for you, whether it's listing and getting it sold right away with us or whether you want to rent your points. We'll rent them out with Paul and crew. Yeah. So, yeah, we're here. And, Just and, reach out to and we didn't intend for this show to really be an infomercial for, you know, resale market or renting or anything like that. This is a question that comes up all the time about, you know, you know, you know I get people that, you know, have come to me personally in an email saying, unfortunately, I'm in a situation where I need to sell. What should I do? Um, and so it is a question that a lot of people ask. It's a question that we are asking ourselves right now. It's a question that Jeff is asking himself right now. So it is a real part of DVC ownership. So hopefully um, we've kind of answered some of those questions that you have for um, the potential situation in which you would need to sell down the road, but that's going to do it for this week's episode of the DVC show. We hope you enjoyed it and we will see you all next week. Bye everybody.